sneak peek, snack pack. That's it. <clears throat> Super excited for this install. It's in this box right here. This is the first IAG part that I am putting in the car. This is the aero separator that almost every Subaru should have because their factory PCB system kind of sucks. Um, one of the many systems that sucks on Subaru, but the IAG one's kind of one of the best ones that fixes all that. So uh, let's open it. Let's open it. But yeah, this is the most exciting part that I'm putting on the car so far. Besides the wheels, everything else, actually this. Look how good it looks. So in the box you get the air oil separator itself, whole bunch of fittings and that's the best part, stickers. And then a whole bunch of various hoses, connections and everything like that to make everything work. So you get all these hoses, a couple of them have AM fittings already on them and those go to certain spots obviously, as well as a whole bunch of hosing that you kind of cut the length for the uh, install. Gives you the benefits if you have a different turbo setup, if you have a different front mount, top mount rotated intake manifold, all kinds of options. So they give you the extra hose so that way you're not running out trying to piece stuff together. First step of the install is removing the intercooler. But before you do that, you can pull this crossover tube out because this is actually completely like eliminated, which is nice. Cleans up the engine bay a lot. So go ahead, pop that off. These hoses are probably gonna crack because they're so old and brittle, but they can replace. Then pull your top mount off. One of the main reasons that we're putting this air oil separator in here, if you see all the oily sludge in there, that's all because we don't have an air oil separator on the car. Now that you have your top mount removed and everything like that, you're gonna go after this front hose. The front hose here is your PCV for the passenger side head, and it's just a little spring clamp, which is probably loose as hell. So you just kinda squeeze that, and pop it off. Just wanna work it off, slowly but surely. That's your passenger side, now that that's off, don't need it anymore, and now we're gonna do the same on the driver's side. Easy way to gain access down to the PCB hose on the driver's side, pull your washer tank real quick. And you can just spin it out of the way instead of having to remove it completely. To remove the driver's side one, you're gonna have to clip the zip tie holder. Same on the passenger side, just pop it off the port. Bay. Right in front of the turbo here is a blow by sensor and use a small flathead screwdriver and kind of lift up at the clamp like that. Then you can wiggle and pull this hose off. So once you've removed the hose off the blow by sensor, which be super careful, especially if it's an old car then it's really brittle, it can crack. Down here there's a small hose clamp which just do it by your hands. Then you can pop this vacuum line off that's going over here. It's going right under the throttle body which I'll show you next. At this point, you should have your top mount removed, your crossover tubes removed, your PCV hoses removed from your factory settings, as well as your factory PCV system should be removed by now. This piece here is your drain tube. The middle piece is your PCV with a valve. And then the top hose goes to your blow-by sensor as factory. So you can ditch the old tube because uh, IAG supplies you with a new one. You can ditch this piece. Now what you're gonna do is take this applied T fitting or the V or Y or whatever you wanna call it, Put this in the new piece of drain tube, put your old uh, back pressure bowl by some other sensor that I forgot to name multiple times uh, on top of it, and then we're gonna install this back on, on the car where the factory one popped off, which is the breather port on top of the block. You can either pop off the throttle body or you can snake your hands on down here and get to this hose down here. So we're gonna just try and snake our hands down here and uh, remove this hose. So there's the hose right there. And what you're gonna do is you kinda just put a firm grasp on it. Firmly grasp it and you can pop it right off. So now we're gonna take the 3 8 hose, which is this one here. You can tell it's because it has a little valve in the middle. That's the port right there that you're gonna take this end of the 3 8 hose and you're gonna fish it on like that. Now, next up, you want to remove this module here. This is actually your daytime running light module. This is on an 05 Forester XT. The Foresters came with these. Uh, the Imprezas and SCIs didn't. that removed, it should look like this. This module was right there, but that's gone. Then we got undo this bolt as well. This is just prepping for the install of the, uh, the can itself. Forcer only, yeah, I have to remove this horn piece. So it's just two bolts on top of the strut. And then this whole bracket comes up. So we'll worry about relocating this afterwards. 
Next, take the two hoses that have the AN fittings on them. They're gonna go in the top port and the bottom port. This basically allows coolant to flow through and heat the can up, and that allows oil to stay in a, like a very liquidy state and flow right on through. Snug these up by hand, and then you're gonna take a 7 8 open end wrench and just snug them up. These are an O-ring fit, so you don't have to go crazy on them, just until they, they feel tight. All you wanna do is just snug them on up. Next, we're gonna take the bracket that's applied and put it onto the AOS, so that way we can get going with uh, installing it. Now that the can is uh, mounted, we're just gonna call it a can, it's, it's a can. Uh, the top port here is for coolant to flow in, and then the hose down below is for it to flow out. So we're gonna take this line, which actually feeds the turbo, we're gonna pop this top hose off, trim this guy to fit, that will go there, and then this guy, this guy, is gonna go to the port on the turbo. So that right there, happy with that. So now that you have this ho the top hose cut to length, undo this clamp, slide this top hose off, and take one of the new supplied uh, clamp hoses here, slide it onto the hose, then slide it onto the top port of the expansion tank, and then slide that clamp right on over. And now we can move to the bottom one. But first, we need to get, take a really quick break. The Bundaberg. Bundaberg, if you're watching this, I don't even want sponsorship, just please respond to my messages. I love your drink. Please, respond to me. Oof. Oh yeah. It's like a Pringle. The fun don't stop till you pop the top. Yeah. So next step, after putting the top hose to the top, you're going after the coolant hose that feeds the turbo, which is boop, that guy right there. Take the lower hose from the air oil separator, which is this guy here and you then route it through everything so that way it comes up to this port. Now we're going after the bomb hose, which is the return line for the coolant. That's gonna be fed into this hard line here, which feeds the turbo. So if you guys can, take the hose, measure it up first, so that way you can slip this one off and slip this guy on real quick. Here we go, all right. Quickly dry up anything that you get on the turbo, that way you don't have to worry about uh, it burning. And then there's your old line. Okay, bye. Next up is this drain hose right here. You can play hopscotch or whatever that game is. Uh, this is coming out from the bottom of the air oil separator that we fastened before with the zip tie. Now we're gonna route this on over and it's ultimately gonna come down to this port right here that we installed before. So at this point you should have the can mounted, the upper line ran going to the uh, expansion tank and then down below your return line feeding into your turbo coolant feed line, which is this guy right here. Now, you should have your drain tube connected to that port there. Biggest thing is, route it up and away from the turbo, so that way it uh, stays away from direct heat source, it's not rubbing on it, and then put it down there to the port, right in front of the turbo that we put in, they, uh, that replaced the PCV line. Once you have it wrapped around here, keep it away from the turbo, you can do a nice little loop, so that way it doesn't like sit on it and burn. Then you're going right to the plastic port that we put in, the T-fitting from before, Feed that in, secure with a zip tie, and we can move on. Yeah. Next up, you're gonna locate the 5 uh fuel hose. The fuel line is denoted by fuel line. The coolant stuff says coolant, as well as it's already on the vehicle. So, you're gonna cut a three inch section of this. And take the according uh, 5 8 barb nipular 90, and slide that on one side. And then take a zip tie, and just secure the hose. Make sure it's nice and flush, so that way you don't slice your arm open like an asshole. And back to the car. Then take this end and put it on that end. Next up, take the 5 8 uh, fuel hose that they supplied. You're gonna go from this port to the bottom port down here. So you trim your excess. Now again, if you have a passenger side air cooler bracket, it goes through it. I don't, so it's just a matter of uh, following it on over down here and trimming it to length and going on the bottom port. Thing, secure it with zip ties from there and there. So next line we're gonna tackle is this one. This is going to go from one of these ports, I'm really honestly think it matters, sneaked all the way down 
to the driver's side valve cover where we took the original port off. So let's do that now. So like I said, there's the original port. Here's your new hose, just like that. And then that's gonna route up and to the can. So then we can measure this up and cut it to length. So trim this to length to meet up with the center port here. And again, secure it with the zip tie. Now for the passenger side, snake this on over. You can snake it through the original uh, location. So now you're routing this up and over to the top port. And then trim that to length. And zip tie. Now that the final top hose on, you now have the original breather system reconnected. Now instead of it being crossed over and then just going to the PCB system, now it's all on the air oil separator. So now we're gonna move on to the PCB line, which is that nipple there. Here's a PCB line. Same thing as before, kind of route it how you want and then cut it. This is looking a little bit jumbled. I'm gonna zip tie some stuff together so it looks a little bit more proper. But also factor in that the intercooler is gonna come down and press down on a whole bunch of this stuff. So cut this guy to length so there's a, enough happy slack. Slide that on the nipple. Zip tie it and you're good to go. If you have a street series, which I have, everything vents back through the engine. If you have a competition, it vents back to the atmosphere at some point. Uh, it's better for E85, so it gets the fumes out, as well as anything above six, 700 horsepower, you're gonna wanna go competition. So this hose right here is going to my turbo inlet. I replaced it with a piece of hose, mainly because the factory one completely cracked the shit. So we're using a piece of hose. Grab your straight barb, slide that on through. Then take your excess hose, which you still should have a ton left, and you're gonna go from one of the ports on the can and join up with here. So cut that to length, join that on the hose right, right there, and you're good to go with that hose. Secure everything with zip ties as usual. So for this line here, you go back onto the pressure sensor, the back pressure, the blow-by sensor, uh, sensor, put a small section of hose, to the 90 and then the 90 comes up to the other port. So that's basically it for installing the air oil separator from IEG. Now it's just a matter of putting all the your accessory pieces, aka that, and then in my case my intake as well because it has a giant heat shield, which works awesome. Uh, so I removed that just for ease of access. So let's uh, let's put the top mount back on, connect all your hoses and make sure it starts and uh, doesn't have a vacuum leak. Cool. As you can tell, it started, so we did something right. But we're all set, everything's good to go. You might have to bleed the cooling system because coolant does go through the aero separator, so it's kind of just an air bubble, but it burps out really quick as long as you swap the hoses really quick. But otherwise, what a beautiful piece of, whatever you wanna call it, but uh, it's a beautiful piece, no less. That's basically everything that you have to remove. Whole bunch of leftover hoses, tubes, crack pieces, crossover tube, so uh, don't need all that anymore. But that's it for the IAG Air Oil Separator Street Series. Uh, like I said, they have the street or the competition. They make them for the GD chassis, the new Subarus and all that. So make sure you get the specific one, otherwise you'll be really upset to this specific one for the GD. And then once you're on the website, if you have a newer WRX, like the FA Motors, whatever, uh, you can find it from there. But uh, otherwise, that's it. So uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you in the next one.